We welcome you to Frickers. The Van Wert Cougars are here. Let's hear it, guys. They are excited for the 2017 season. Opens at Bryan, and we're joined by the head coach, Keith Recker, sixth season at the helm. Coach, does it feel like you've been head coach for that long here, no, Van Wert? I mean, it goes fast. It's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, we, we got... You know, like I told you earlier, you know, Coach Smelser's back, and it's like he was here my first couple years, and then back to be here that long. It's, I mean, I'm blessed, you know, to, to be able to keep this job and to work with the guys I do. Yeah, let's talk about Mr. Van Wert, Ken Smelser, yeah. the AD for so long, the uh, coaching in so many different ways. What's it like to have him back on the team? Oh, it's huge because uh, it's an experienced guy. We went into this year uh, with a coach, a couple coaches that decided not to coach again, and I thought we need to get older and more experienced as a coaching staff, and. And, and Kent brings all that to the table. A lot of experience, um, just little intricacies that he can bring to a, a drill or a play, and, and just his input has been very good for us. You said earlier, you're really enjoying this group of guys. You're enjoying coaching this year. Why is that? I think because of, of what we're focused on it and really challenge them this year uh, to, as PJ Fleck from Minnesota says, change your best. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all we can control. So today was our most important day of the season. And then tomorrow is going to be our most important day of the season, and and just taking it one game, or, you know, one day by one day, and and when we get to week one, we'll get to it. But we're not there yet, so we're not worried about it. And in the years past, it's kind of been well, you know, 20 days till Brian, and and if we win two out of three, maybe we can get something going, and okay. we can't have that thought. And and so we we've taken that away, and and uh, just we're going to try to change our best every day. Was that hard to to get the guys to buy into that? Uh. You know, I, I, they've done a good job. I don't know what their thought on it was, okay. but at least when they're around me, I, I haven't heard talk of, of Crestview's coming up, right. Brian's coming up. In, in years past, I've heard that, and, and maybe it's because they don't want to say it around me because of what I believe right now, but um, you know, I, I hope that they've taken to that really well. And, and when we're at practice and we're doing things, you know, that's all I hear. It's, it's we've got to get better today, and, and that's all we can control. You know, Walpock's going to be good. But we can't control what Walpock does. We got to take care of ourselves, and and uh, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. We just got to get better. You guys want to play fast. Uh, I assume your practices are fast. You spread it out. How have you assessed the talent in, in scrimmages so far? Well, I, I I've been very pleased. You're not knowing you're coming off an 0-10 season. Uh, one morale. How are they going to come out? Are they going to be excited? And and they've been very excited. And then two. What do we have? We we had two scrimmages. Uh, played uh, Springfield Green in. Uh, with with another team in Parkway over at Parkway, and then uh, had Versailles Friday. In both those scrimmages, we played really well, and and against the Versailles team, who uh, Adam Miller up there, I know him from, you know, my buddy from high school. Blue so, Jay connection. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talked a lot, and, and he feels pretty good about his team, and and uh, to beat them five to two, I, I thought was really good. Our guys showed a lot of grit. There were times that we faced adversity, that other times we might have folded, and we stepped up and. And you know we were down by two in the two quarters, oh, wow. and uh, came back and tied it uh, at the end of the half. So uh, felt really good about uh, how they've overcome that. And, and again, then that was over. And Saturday then was our most important day, and we got better from film, and we moved on to Monday. And and that's what we're going to do every day of the season. Four offensive linemen returning from last year. How does that help? Just kind of undergird the the offense there. Well, you come out that first day of practice. And you can say a play, and they just go, and that's <laughs> it's so nice. And that's a, you know, consistent. You talked about being here six years. Yeah. You you get that consistency where you're after two years, three years, the guys just know what to do. So we come out and hey, we're in this session, and they're gone. And and it's not as much of the teaching curve that you want. So having those four guys back up front, they can communicate with each other. A couple of them were sophomores last year. Now they're juniors, a lot more ready to play and. And you know we told we've got good skill guys. Uh, we've got some explosive athletes, and that's not going to matter at all if we don't block anybody. <laughs> so, right. so you know those guys that we're going to get those guys the ball. But uh, the reason we're going to be any good is uh, those guys up front. Talking about the skill guys, Nate Place, a quarterback, Jacoby Kelly, playmaker. No matter what sport he's playing, it seems like. How are you leaning on those guys this year? Well, they're going to get. 80, 90 percent of our touches just because they deserve it. You know, as, as we talk, Nate played receiver last year yep. for us. And we thought, you know, do we want Nate to have the ball four times or 20 times? Mm -hmm. And it's not too hard to figure out. You want him to have it 20. And same thing with Jacoby. Uh, we played him at tailback last year. And, and you know, all we had was kind of handing it to him. So right. put him out at a, at a slot receiver. We can do jet motion with him. We could shovel it to him. We could throw screens to him, throw it downfield to him. And, and you know, we're, we are running the same plays. Nothing's changed. Our formations are the same. It's just what do we emphasize? Who do we need to get the ball to? 
Western Buckeye League, always wild, so much uh, depth at times, there's parity. Uh, everyone looking at Wapakoneta, what, what they've done year after year, but th this year there's a lot of questions amongst the WBL, and I know you're only taking it one day at a time, yeah. but as you look, uh, just kind of give us a broad scope of what you see in the WBL. Well, it's a, until somebody knocks Walpock off, I mean, they, they're, they're the champion right now, and, and Coach Moyer, I admire him so much. I think he's just done a fabulous job, and, and then you talk to him. I see him at a basketball game and just talk. He's just a, a nice guy, a, a, a man's man. He's just a really good guy. So, um, you know, the, I think they're going to keep going with, with him at the helm and the guys that they can roll in there. And then after that, you know, St. Mary's and, and Coach Fry, he does a good job. But uh, we had their guys in the All-Star game, and, and they had eight men playing you know, in, in the All-Star game. So they've lost quite a bit. And, and OG, um, unfortunate for them, and really it's it's – you know, good for the league, but I hate to see that for a kid like like Jay Kaufman, who, who's an excellent player, uh, just fun to watch. But so without him, what are they going to be? And, but Coach Schreiner does a good job, and, and it's just there, there should be a lot of parity. I mean, there's a lot of it's a very competitive league, and you know, each week you got to bring it. We'll have the Van Wert at Shawnee football game that's September 22nd for you on WTLW. As you get ready for that first game, what kinds of things are, do you tighten up as a coach, as you look at your team, you know, getting closer to that first Friday night? How does things come into focus? Well, I think it's good with our scrimmages you know, to see the referees there and, and, okay. and the little things like, like we jumping off sides or holding, that doesn't get called during practice. That yeah. guys realize, yeah, I do need to keep my hands inside or I do need to back up off the ball a little bit. Uh, just those little things that all of a sudden a, a, a third and four is third and nine now that we can't have or a, or a third and 12, uh, you know, that, that really kills drive. So uh, things like that. And then just uh, things that we see live, like, like Versailles uh, brought a couple blitzes on us and and just the speed of that, that we need to step down with our own line or, or pick up a blitz, uh, just the quickness of things happening. So I think if we shore up those things, that, that we'll, we'll feel pretty good going into the Brian game. You're an off the field guy. You like experiences for guys. You like to teach life lessons. What did you guys do in the summer? Anything in particular? Well, we, we still do our camping trip. Okay. Yep. And, uh, uh, our coaches are still undefeated at volleyball. We, we, our, guy, our guys struggle at volleyball. So it's a good thing they're, they're playing football and not volleyball. You pick the right sport. Yeah. They can't play beach volleyball. But uh, we have a great time with that. And then, then what we've done this year is uh, the, the Real Man program by Frank DeCoco. Uh, listened to a guy in Chicago talk about it and, and really liked what it, what it taught them. So the Real is an acronym. Uh, stands for respect all people, especially women. Always do what's right and live a life that matters. And, and it's just teaching guys that, yes, you are popular. Yes, you are, are physically uh, uh, intimidating, physically strong. But what do you do with that? You know, what, what can you do in life and, and to touch other people? And so we've started that. And we're, and we're going to uh, our first week of the season, we're going we're to really dig into that through week 10. And, and it's going to be a two or three year process to oh, wow. get through that manual. I mean, they sent four books that are, are thick and a lot of information. but. But I, I just love what's in there because I think it teaches guys a lot about life. Yeah, good stuff. Keith Recker doing a great job at Van Wert. When we return, we'll talk to some of the seniors all right here at Frickers on WSN. Good stuff. Thank right. you. Yep, thank Two, I guess quarter number two, and we're with three of the seniors. To my left is Daniel McGowan, senior offensive lineman. In the middle, Kobe Palmer, linebacker, and Corey Exley. On the end, Corey, let's start with you. How excited are you for, for, for week one? I know it's day by day, but ready senior year, football's here. Uh, for sure. Uh, it, it's been real eye-opening this summer, stepping on the field for senior pictures and scrimmages and seven-on-sevens and stuff like that. Just how quickly the four years have gone past and how much we've grown together as a family. So young last year. Does it feel different now that there's a lot of experience on this team? Yeah. Um, the way we fly around on the field, uh, we, can talk up, we can talk up front, like on the defensive line, and talk as our position groups uh, on the field without having to say a whole lot with knowing, knowing what each other knowing what we need to do. Kobe, how do you feel the two days and preseason has gone so far? Uh, it's gone pretty well. It took a lot out of us, but I feel like as it kept going on, we kept coming out with the same energy and really giving each other good looks and 
really going out and trying to give it our all every day. What was it that took, took a lot out of you? Was the program tougher this year or just just, just usual two a days? Just kind of the usual two a days, <laughs> just dragging on, hot sun. Yeah. Fair here in Van Wert's a little later. How does that does that affect the season at all, or you just keep going football? Kind of just keep going on with football. Okay. I know up in Hancock County, it's, it's tough sometimes for teams to, to get used to that. You got the fair going on as well. So we talked now to Daniel McGowan, one of those four returning uh, offensive linemen. How do you feel the, the unit's coming together? Uh, I feel like it's coming together uh, really well, a lot better than last year for sure. Uh, I feel like the guys up front, we know what we're doing a little bit better, and definitely coming together so fast is, is what this offense wants to be how's that for you as a lineman um well as a lineman obviously fast isn't it's not in our vocabulary but we <laughs> it's not, we try not to, a word associated with yeah with you. Okay. we try we try to keep it up though we try to keep <laughs> up the pace those skill guys uh well, what's it like when you see jacoby make a catch and take off or you know nate um, go around the corner sometimes it's, it's kind of unreal when they're in the open field you just know no one's going to get after them i mean they're just they they're Ten yards away from people already, and by the time they get to the end zone, they're 20 yards away. It's it's kind of crazy. Lots of excitement for Van Wert. We will have their game against Shawnee broadcast on TV 44. Final question is a serious one. Winging in competition, who's going to win here at Frickers? Jordan Daniel Chubb. Where's Jordan? You can stand <laughs> up. All right, there you go. He's the guy that's going to win. How many do you think you can put down? 126. No way. It, it's going to be wild. It's going to happen? You already have it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here at Frickers, that's going to happen. We'll see if it does. We'll talk with three more of the players. When we return, we're here at Frickers on WOSN. It's the Van Wert Cougars preview show. Final quarter here at Frickers with the Van Wert Cougars. It is their preview show. Jacoby Kelly to my left, James Aquaviva running back in the middle, and Storm Pierce, the wide receiver at the end. Jacoby, we'll start with you reliving your sophomore year against Salina. What happened? Uh, it's funny. Uh, sophomore year, it was a home game against Salina, and quarterback got out, it was all scramble, and he threw it. I'm looking up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is an interception, interception. And next thing I know, I smoked the goalpost, and the goalpost won. So right now, it's one goalpost and Kobe zero. So. <laughs> Those anchors feel goal, goalposts are old, too. So it didn't <laughs> yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. It was there. So position switch, running back to wide receiver, how's that going? Uh, at first, I was like, oh, OK, well, I'm not taking as many shots. But then we're not, we didn't change anything. And I mean, I'm slimmed down now, because I did track before. But I love this position, because I mean, I'm still getting as many touches as I want. and. If I'm not getting the ball, I'm a decoy, and I'm a threat to other people. So I appreciate that. Three sports with track and basketball. How much does that help you season to season? Uh, keeps me in shape. That's, <laughs> that's one thing for sure. I mean, I'm always in the weight room and putting up shots or doing drills, whatever. So I mean, I'm just keeping me in shape and keeping me healthy, and I love it. James Aquaviva, running back, and another great name. Uh, in running back lore, we remember Justice Tussing and yep. a number of guys. How excited are you for the season? I'm, I'm so, I mean, I love tailback. I love running back. Last year I played outside linebacker, so I'm making that transition to tailback. So it's going to be a good year. Chance to just go one way. A lot of you guys uh, are able to do that because of your depth. Do you feel like that gives you an advantage? Yes, that's a huge advantage. So, I mean, my legs will be fresh on offense. Um, so will Kobe's, Nate's will be pretty fresh. Storm Pierce. You've been Storm all your life, I understand. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Another great football name. And, and when you spoke during the mic check, it was loud and booming, yeah. just like a storm would be. As a <laughs> wide receiver, <laughs> are you booming out there as well? Are you making the, the big blocks? Do you like the big guy? Uh, oh, teams? yeah, man. I love the big blocks and the fades. Those are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you look like it. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> What's the senior class uh, mean? And kind of what, what what's special about you guys? Um, we just We just... We're so go-getting. Like we guys, we work hard and we just great leaders. Honestly, we're like probably one of the best leader leading classes. Honestly, I've been around, and we guys, we just don't give up. Like honestly, it's just constantly going and giving it 100 percent. That that camping trip that you guys do every year in the summer. Do you look forward to it? What's that like? I mean, yeah, it's fun, and I like to. I don't like to walk down to the lake. That's a little long walk, but I mean. <laughs> It's always fun to throw the football around the guys and talk to them and listen to music and just kind of chillax, you know, and 
just yeah. kind of lay back, man. It's fun. Just no beach volleyball. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> ben, we're ready for Brian when it comes. Week number one, and then we'll have the game against Shawnee on September the 22nd. And highlights, of course, all season long on the Sports Report. Thanks to Coach Record and the guys for joining us here at Frickers for the Van Wert Cougars preview show on WOSN.